Well, hello there, YouTube. Does it feel any different today? Does it look any different? I feel it does. <laughs> today is the first day of spring. Hopefully have a nice spring and even a better summer. We'll have to just kind of sit back and see what happens on that one. Because no one can predict it exactly. But uh, anyway, it's Monday. It's the uh, 20th of March. It's 47 degrees out here. It feels like springtime. Feels great. Anyway, let's bounce. Let's start off this Monday, the first day of spring. Look out! <laughs> well, Mama, as we say every week, that daggum yeah. Monday slipped around, but quick. It did, that one. Yeah, well, nice weekend though. It very was. nice weekend. Yeah, very nice. Got ourselves a little trailing now. We got our minds are spinning about yeah making paths out there and having little obstacle courses that you run into as you're going along. And yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, we even bought some stuff at the store yesterday to Have facilitate that. some of that. Yes. <laughs> Got all these project ideas, and you just gotta get them done. I know, it just need time. <laughs> yeah, it's always about the time. Mm -hmm. Well, Mama? Yes, sir. Go in there and earn our keep, I reckon. Yep. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. All right, love. You see you bye. I know. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye. So the old saying, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. Well, we kind of say that about spider people too. Well, not always. <laughs> Guy has an emergency. Squeeze him in on the schedule. Do your best to get him done and the guy for days has hovered you ever read the book actually the book goes back quite a ways Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People some people need to pull that up and, and do some reading I haven't met the person no idea but uh yeah that's not how you win friends and influence people you have people doing you a favor and apparently you're just not being very nice i don't i don't know even when someone's not doing me a favor i'm generally nice but anyway on this thing no harm no foul so yeah it's just a, you know, I one of the things, uh, the biggest dangers of uh, overfilling these things, and I have no idea, no evidence that's what happened, none, because there wasn't enough oil in it to uh, to show that uh, it was overfilled at any time. But what can happen? Just like with any combustion engine, you overfill them with oil. It can blow all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's bikes that blew out counter shaft seals, crank seals, um, valve cover gaskets, blow them out, all kinds of stuff. But one of the things that I question in the back of my mind is, was the thing overfilled with oil? Even though right by the dipstick, there's this big yellow caution. You can't miss this thing. You absolutely can't miss this thing. Caution. It tells you that the bike needs to be um, you want know, full temp, do not check the oil cold, start it up, and you get the classic thing, well, how do I know it had oil in it when I parked it last? If you're worried about that, check it while you've been running it and you get home, let her idle, let her balance out. It's got to sit there for 10 minutes. Check the oil then. And first and foremost, they don't burn oil, so it has to leak it. So, did it drip anything on the ground? You could have had a motor problem. Was it, you know, blowing out the back like a mosquito sprayer? No, and no. So, you have enough oil in there to start it up and let it warm up. <laughs> I don't know. Runs absolutely warm. Well, it should. 
doesn't even have it's less than 1500 miles in this thing she is a puppy that nice day we had was it a couple weeks ago i noticed the harley was out boy saturday was something else that felt so good to get out there on that slim go romping around what an incredibly fun motorcycle Believe it or not, that was one that I... Hey, there he is! <laughs> That's my old boy. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Wish I had the time to get off and chit-chat with him, but I don't. Because yet again, unprovoked, he's hovering. <laughs> wow whatever you're doing whether it's car I don't care refrigerator whatever it is if you take it to the repair shop don't hover around you make everybody nervous I've been doing this long enough you're not going to taint me at all but you make people nervous and that's when mistakes get made and that's the you know people like that tend to have problems everywhere they go every shop I go to have problems are you sure it's the shop and not you causing something? I mean, I brushed that stuff off. Been doing it way too long. But you'll hear guys that, you know, oh, this guy's here, he's hovering, keeps peeking his head back here. You're making the guy nervous. Wherever you work, would you like somebody hovering over you? I haven't even seen this guy, so like I say, I don't, I don't have that issue. But it can happen. It's a real thing. Nice in, nice out. I can smell the oil on it. On it. Everything's getting so hot. It's just, it's going to do that for a... It needs to be taken for a good old ride. It'll take that smell right off of it. It's just on the motor. And um, I'm like, have you ever had a coolant spill? Like you spill it as you're filling your radiator and the coolant gets in the fins of the radiator? Man, it takes a long time to heat cycle that coolant smell out of there. You can spray it with water. You can do whatever you want. It just doesn't seem to go away. It's just time. I'm surprised I'm smelling anything. I thoroughly bathed this thing. Spent a bunch of time that, you know, I will not get paid for. You know, BRP may spiff me something for a cleanup because it's still under warranty. But yeah, they're not, they'll never pay the amount of time I have in it. The old saying, it doesn't pay to care. <laughs> But I'm cool with that kind of stuff. I like to complain about it. I don't get paid, so if I complain about it a little bit, I feel better. <laughs> so I'll find a spot to land this guy up here. And his hovering will be over. You hey, watch, I'll meet the guy. And it's the service guy is just exaggerating, which is highly possible. Be the nicest dude ever. You just never know about these things. Should have parked him back there on the Indian side. I'm gonna land him right here today. This is a good spot. Plus, we get a you get to keep a better eye on it while it's sitting here. All right. I appreciate you guys coming for a rip on a 2021 RT Limited. This is a dark edition. You literally could have pushed me over with a feather. This is a 2010 Spider RT. And I would guess an RTS. Or maybe an RT standard. Because it doesn't have uh, ACS or anything on it. I don't, I don't remember what was what back then. 
you got to manually air it. It had foot pegs. Somebody put the old Jim Anderson seal boards on there. So she had a health issue of some sort, and it's been sitting for years. Look at that, 36,000 miles on it. And had to put, it was so, the battery was so dead, the BMW charger didn't even recognize it. It says connect it to a battery. It was just a complete open circuit. But smelt the gas, kind of almost didn't, wasn't bad. It didn't have a skanky bad smell to it. Looked at the bottom, there was no um, phase separ separation from ethanol. Wasn't the prettiest color, but then ethanol fuel doesn't look that good anyway. Hit the button, literally lit right off. It's been sitting in here for probably 15 minutes now. I've been putting everything together after replacing the battery. The only fault code was some battery codes. Thought for sure I'd have a 1614 throttle body failure or something on it. Nope. And it's been sitting here. It ticked and rattled and carried on for a little bit. But uh, once the tensioners got some oil in them and everything was happy, she's sitting here running. Yeah. I just knew this was going to be a nightmare before me. <laughs> you know how those go. You can almost see it coming. The only problem I've seen, it's got a marker light out up front. And then I think, unfortunately, God forsaken, yep, car tire on the back. Missing antenna, but obviously somebody's known that's been gone for a while. There's a piece of foil over it. The radio station was stuck on some Spanish thing. It started blasting it out, so it's, it's picking up a signal. So, there we are. 2010. I'm pretty sure it's an RT standard. It'll be a... Have to wrap the seat with a garbage bag to take it for a test ride, because, uh... Yeah, you have a wet, hi wet hiney. That's pretty cool. I'll be darned. All right, I'm gonna see if I can explain my, I'll flip this thing over, it might be easier to see here in a second. But here's, you know, the steering horn, servo horn. This is the link that goes for steering. Back right there is the Panhart bar. And what's happening is when I'm riding along, the shocks are packing down after a bit. And then all, these are all collecting. See, the servo horn is actually hitting the Panhart bar. Flip this thing right quick. All right, with assistance, a little woman. Only way I can do this is have her hold it. So here's the Panhart bar going across there. There's the servo horn. And when this all collapses, can't do it here because I can't do it with one hand. But when everything all collapses, the Panhart bar is actually hitting the servo horn. Well, obviously over time, that's not gonna be a good thing, but that's only when I'm going fast with it. But going slow speed, nothing touches. And I set the suspension up away in a way that it doesn't, but at speed, it's packing down almost like the oil's too thick and not allowing it to rebound as much. So, uh, let me show you what I got going on here. Okay. Ignore the fact that these are different strength springs. Technically, this is a soft, this is a medium, this is a hard, but I'm just showing you length because some of the stuff are in the shocks I can't show you. So this is the way they come out of the box. It has a short, soft um, spring at the bottom, your droop spring, so to speak. And then it has a long soft at the top. And, um, well, I, I changed that from stock. So what I did first, and I played around for quite a bit, what I came up with was a medium at the bottom, medium soft, which that really is, by the way. But we're talking length only, to ignore the strength of the springs. So it has a medium length soft and a long soft at the top. And that's what I did the first time. Well... The medium soft at the bottom just wasn't enough to get all the body roll out of it. I mean, you're not going to get all, all anyway. But, so what I came up with last, because it was 
but literally bouncing on the pan art bar and making the the wheels wiggle almost like the lugs were loose or something. This is a tire, by the way. <laughs> the wheel. So what I came up with last was a long soft underneath. This is the piston, by the way. <laughs> then I put a medium short and a soft short and stacked them on top. That's the way those are set up right now. And that's probably all the better it's going to get. And it doesn't, at speed, I think it might, over really rough stuff, it might be hitting the pan art bar. But it's set up where it won't. It's too dark, I can't, it's hard to show you. But it won't hit the pan art bar. And I don't get the crazy wheels, but I get a very bouncy ride at speed. It's set up, that setup is for a rock crawler. If I want a good overall setup, let's put the stock shocks back on. So what these are doing, the stock shocks, all you got is sag. And then the spring is your rebound as you're going. The oil and the piston is your damping. These have a spring underneath that is creating that droop, which is holding the truck down. And with that droop, it can control body roll. Look at that thing, just wants to go right back to neutral every time. I just need to come up with some kind of combo or something to, um, I want it to be a little bit better. What I'm thinking at this point, like Kelly said, just put the stock shocks on. If I want to play around crawling, I'll use the Desert Lizards general goofing around and playing and having a good old time. The good old, very, very, very smooth functioning stock tracks is shocks. There, enough of the shocks. <laughs> you guys are probably saying the same thing. Well, hello there, YouTube. It's amazing that <laughs> off in the western sky, looks like it, actually we came home, it looked like it was trying the sunshine on us. It absolutely come on hinge the whole way home. Yeah. That was a deluge of water. Yeah, I was like, man, welcome to the first day of spring. That was mm -hmm. some crazy rain. And there was times it was so hard, all the traffic, you know, there's just a big whiteout and the old auto windshield wipers are whoop, 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 and just going crazy fast. That was nuts. Yeah. And then the closer we're getting water. home, and then there's a couple of spots right before Castle Rock. I go, look, the pavement's dry. Yeah. And you could see at the Castle Rock exit, the yeah. rain kicking up from the cars and oh man hit again mm -hmm. but then we got up here it wasn't just a light sprinkle but yeah. even sasha hung around outside all of a sudden she comes flying in and i go Are you getting the dogs now and she goes she was painted to the wall <laughs> she was painted to the wall it started raining yeah poor thing but anyway we're past sunset we figured there's enough light we'll just try to do it anyway yeah. i'm liking these in the daylight Goodbye vlogs. Yeah, not on the porch. Yeah, not on the porch or in the car or something weird like that. Yeah. Know? Makes it easier. Yeah, it's easy. It's just more us outside. You yeah. Know? <laughs> anyway, on that, we're going back. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Tuesday or Wednesday. Heck yeah. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. See you in the morning. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.